So for a long time, synth players have had a sort of secret weapon when it comes to performing um, notes that they play, and that is to manipulate pitch with the pitch bend wheel. Now, pitch bend wheels traditionally look like this. Wheels over on the left-hand side, next to the modulation wheel, where we have a, a wheel that resets to the middle. Not every synth has that, but this is kind of like the traditional way of being able to um, manipulate pitch with a pitch wheel that snaps back into the middle, um, allowing us to bend notes sharp or flat. What I've got on this keyboard here is a different type of uh, pitch bend wheel. I've got this, uh, this modulation stick over here on the left-hand side, and if I play a synth note, I can bend that stick down um, and up as well, allowing me to control pitch bend. Now, as a technique for uh, working with sound, the thing about pitch bend is that we can actually achieve really interesting things beyond simply sort of soloing. We kind of tend to imagine almost sort of playing melodies in and bending an individual note up and down, but we can go way further than that with pitch bend and do some really interesting things. And we don't actually have to record that pitch bend data in in real time to make it part of our MIDI performance. We can always go and do it back in post production production afterwards. So let's have a look at how that might work. So what I've got here is a little two bar phrase with one repeating note, which is a bit syncopated playing on top of a kick drum. Let's have a listen to it. Okay, now what I want to do is to manipulate pitch, and I could do that by actually recording uh, the pitch movement on my keyboard, or what I can do is to go and find pitch bend as a parameter and draw the shape that I want to use. So what I'm going to do is to open up the MIDI, and within Logic, what I have a chance to do is to record uh, what's called uh, MIDI automation. Now, again, every single workstation has this option, so go and find how to do this within yours. What I'm going to do is to come down here and choose the parameter I want, which is pitch bend. I can select that here, and now I have a chance to see the pitch bend line that exists for this project. Now, of course, there isn't one yet because I haven't made one. Now, unlike lots of parameters like modulation where zero is off and 127 is maximum, obviously pitch bend is fixed around the middle. So any line that gives me zero is going to be in the middle. Anything positive of that is going to be an upward pitch bend and anything below it is going to be a downward pitch bend. So what I could do if I wanted to would be to simply kind of create a little shape where the note bends sharp and then it bends flat and then it comes back maybe at the end back to zero in time for this to sort of reset, ready for the beginning of the phrase. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, now at the moment, what we've got is a pitch bend range, which is, as always, determined by the synthesizer playing the sound. I'm not in a position to make this pitch bend jump an octave using logic or using uh, the data line that I create for pitch bend. What I need to do is to go and find the plugin that I'm using. I'm currently using Spectrosonics Trillion, and to go and find where pitch bend can be manipulated in terms of its upward and downward movement. Now, often that's fixed. You'll find that the pitch bend range is maybe set to 12, which would be an octave, or seven, which would be a fifth in either direction. But what Trillion allows me to do, like some other synths, is to set a different range for downward and upward movement. So what I could do if I wanted to do would be to select an octave simply by clicking multiple times or clicking on the number itself and selecting 12, 12 semitone steps as the downward movement. And what I can also do is to choose a different value for upward movement. So if I select a uh, three, for instance, that's going to be a minor third. Now that might actually change what I decide to do with this synth part. Um, what I could do would be to have the, um, the shape um, change in order to reflect the pitch bend movement that I've got. And what's interesting about setting a pitch bend range is that it actually it starts suggesting hooks and musical ideas and bass lines, which simply sticking with one sort of uh, fixed pitch doesn't always do. So let's hear the same shape, but with this extended pitch bend range, this is now going to be a much bigger sweep downwards than it was before. Okay, but one thing I might choose to do would be to change the shape as I suggested. So what I'm going to do this time is to actually have a note that comes all the way down, a phrase that comes all the way down 
And what I want to do is to make sure that it reaches the bottom by this note here. What I'm going to do is to allow it to stay at that point all the way down at the bottom and then simply reset to come back in for the very beginning of um, the hook when it comes back the next time. The other thing I'm going to do is to make sure that the pitch bend doesn't actually start moving straight away. So rather than just immediately playing a note and beginning to bend, I'm going to allow it to sort of stay on this default pitch to start with before it then begins to drop. So that's working nicely. The next thing I could do would be to say, okay, well, I've got this upward movement as well, which now I'm kind of ignoring. I'm only using this kind of downward movement. So I can sort of think musically, okay, well, if my note is an E flat and I've set the upward movement to be three semitones higher, that effectively means that I've got a kind of minor third at the beginning. Well, I could push this all the way up to the top and that's gonna make that note effectively a G before it starts to then sort of fall away to uh, the sort of reset value, which is taking this note back to a, um, an E flat. Now, again, if music theory isn't sort of under your fingertips, it doesn't matter, just create a breakpoint envelope here with as many points as you like and keep moving nodes around until you find a sort of a melodic or baseline shape that feels like it's working from a pitch perspective. <laughs> Okay, I'm not so fond of that, but I do like the upward movement. So what I'm gonna do is to bring this back down to a zero, and instead what I'm gonna do is to sort of make sure that I'm hitting this note at that higher pitch. So it goes up, and then it resets, and then it drops. <laughs> actually even sort of bring this down a little bit lower and create a sort of second ramp where the pitch appears to jump back up before continuing to drop. Of course, it's easy enough simply just to knock out individual points and take a phrase back to the sort of down ramp if what you want to do is just actually um, sort of go back to where we started. So what we've had a chance to do here is to see the power of pitch bend, particularly if you're working with a plugin which allows you to set an independent value for downward and upward movement. And either you can play that in real time, literally recording pitch bend movement with a performance as you make it, or as we've seen here, we can go and sort of do it in post-production, creating a pitch bend ramp which suits the phrase that we've played perfectly.